If you've driven down La Jolla Boulevard recently, you might have noticed a bright yellow billboard of people walking. If this is an advertisement, it's not clear what it's for. On the reverse side, a vibrant pink sign. And again, faceless pedestrians stride through the frame. It might be an advertisement. It might be a painting. We don't know exactly what, um, but it's not there as a saying, hi, I'm a big piece of art. But it is, in fact, a big piece of art. It's one of 11 murals that have been placed in La Jolla over the last couple of years. Michael Critchman is on the Committee of Arts Leaders that helped put them there. All of us on that committee, most all of us, have been through, in one way or another, the public art wars in, in San Diego and uh, um, pretty consistent losing those wars. So I think that it was not something that we were interested in in, uh, in making an unpleasant process. San Diego's public art wars have led to controversial decisions. A Nancy Rubin's boat sculpture was supposed to grace Harbor Drive. It was voted down. The statue of a sailor kissing a nurse was voted in, despite opposition from a committee of experts. In order to get the La Jolla murals up, the group made a decision. They decided to take their public art project and go private. Obviously, with the, with the city, you're dealing with public dollars, public funding, and it's a, a, a slightly different process. It's private funding, private property, so it's, a, it's very different in nature. Linda Forche is the curator of the mural project. She says they decided early on to put the murals on private property. It was a process of really walking around, just kind of looking for blank facades, and it turns out that there were many. They found buildings they liked, contacted the property owners, and asked if they'd be willing to have a temporary mural on their building. Many agreed, including Leon Cassell, who likes the mural on his building so much, he doesn't want it to go away. Well, I hope it stays here forever, as long as I own the building. Once I don't own it, but I hope it still stays here. The mural is by artist Roy McMakin. It's composed of painted squares, all different colors. I asked Cassell, what if they wanted to put a provocative mural on the side of his building? So what? They didn't do it. I mean, as long as, long as it's, it's decent, but so what? You know, it will be a, a topic for conversation. And again, as I said, that will bring people to La Jolla. Not to buy a t-shirt, just walk around and look at the art. The murals aren't only on private property, they are funded with private dollars. Budgets range between $20,000 and $75,000. The murals are also temporary. They will each be rotated out eventually. You know, so I think that's been a, probably one of the reasons that, um, you know, the people have liked the project and if they don't like a particular mural, they know that um, it will be changed, that something else will be coming along. The murals are made inexpensively using billboard technology. The artist sends a digital file of the image. It's printed on vinyl and secured to the wall on a metal frame. This mural by Ryan McGinnis is so large, it's printed on three pieces of vinyl. If you have dinner at George's at the Cove, make sure to reserve the table where you can see the mural by John Baldessari. The newest addition is this mural by Los Angeles artist Gajin Fujita. He is um, first generation Japanese, but he grew up in East LA. So I think you'll see that his, his work is really a hybrid of those two traditions and sensibilities coming together in a really dynamic and interesting way. The Murals of La Jolla project was spearheaded by the La Jolla Community Foundation. The goal is to have 16 murals in place. After that, the group will begin rotating new murals in. Unlike public art pieces that will be with us for decades to come, the temporary nature of the murals means a variety of art on otherwise bland walls. Angela Carone, KPBS News.